during our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk just a little bit about plant growth hormones. Now, you may have heard about human growth hormones and how you're often told to steer clear from human growth hormones or anything in that realm. Okay, that all sounds bad. But for plants, we do want to, in certain cases, use the addition of more plant growth hormones to spur certain types of growth within plants. So we wanted to explain that just a little bit today and how that can actually be really, really good for overall yields and profits. There are three main hormones we're going to talk about today. The first one I'll mention is gibberellic acid. This is involved in shoot growth. And when we think about like your lawn, for example, there are times of the year where the grass is not growing very fast and you can mow once a week or maybe once every other week, depending on what type of grass you have. And then there are other times of year where that grass, the shoot growth is just unbelievable and you can mow the lawn and two days later, it looks like you need to mow it again. Well, guess what's happening? During that time, your root system is naturally producing gibberellic acid in large quantities and it's creating a lot of shoot growth. So for farmers raising crops, they have a limited time to grow that crop. They can use gibberellic acid to get shoot growth started a little bit sooner. This is a natural hormone normally produced in your roots just doesn't move through the plant very well in cool weather or get produced very well in cool weather and the reason why we're talking about this today is you may have a lawn and so I realize this is our farm basics time and usually we don't get super in depth here but if you want your lawn to grow more you just need to trick the plant into thinking everything is good well how you trick the plant is you just put on some super cheap gibberellic acid in the spring and in the fall when the weather is cool like in the 50 to 65 degree range and now all of a sudden you'll get a lot more growth now if you don't like to mow your lawn don't do this but if you want your lawn to look better this is a good method to use. Two main uses of gibberellic acid for farmers are using it where they have pasture grass and they want to get cattle out there earlier in the spring or allow cattle to graze longer into the fall. Gibberellic acid at each time applied twice during the year could be a really nice system. The other thing would be silage corn. Farmers like silage corn is going to get chopped and fed to dairy cattle or beef cattle. They like that corn to get tall. They like lots of growth. Gibberellic acid is a good way to get it taller. Okay, then the other two endobutyric acid uh, and I have a tough time even saying it that's why we usually shorten it up and call it IBA and IBA what that's basically doing is it has more to do with the root system so if you want more roots then you put on this IBA and use that as a supplement now that could be used as a seed treatment in furrow it could be sprayed foliar but that has more impact on the roots the cytokinin would be a little bit like that. It helps with cell division and it's going to impact the roots and shoots a lot. So cytokinin often gets packaged with IBA and many different products that are being used. So once again, there are three main plant growth hormones that farmers will use today and certainly people just with a lawn could use gibberellic acid. But it, it's kind of interesting just how our market has shifted so much. So it used to just be, oh, people are using herbicides, maybe a fungicide and they're using fertilizer. Well, now people are thinking about, hey, is there a way to use a plant growth hormone? It's just a natural product, doesn't hurt anybody, anything else. And we wanna use these products to spur growth. They're very inexpensive and they're very commonly used now all around the world. Well, getting our crops to grow better can also help us hold down our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed?